What's going on everybody? Trailblazer881 here and I want to welcome you back to another video. This one, we're going to be starting a new game. We're going to be playing Back to the Future, the game. Uh, saw this at work the other day. I was like, what the heck? This looks like it might be kind of fun. So, uh, premise behind it, six months after Back to the Future Part 3, the DeLorean time machine mysteriously returns to Hill Valley. Uh, driverless, Marty McFly must once again go back into time or else the space-time continuum will be forever unraveled so uh we're gonna pick up we're gonna jump into this game uh, i hope this is pretty good this is a uh tell tell tale games uh they usually do really good stuff so we're gonna we're gonna see how this goes everybody loves marty mcfly new game all right so we're jumping in here before we begin would you like to uh see notifications when marty has a new goal yes show goals okay Oh, that's cool. The flux capacitor is the icon for saving. All right, I'm ready. Baby, I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the pond at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1 18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einy. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. All right, so it looks like on. they're recreating the, uh, the, the scene it. from the first movie. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch ahead. All right. So we know what happens here. Einstein's going to go into the future, one minute into the future. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. <laughs> if my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious <laughs> shit. Come on. Let's do it. Watch this. Watch this. Let's follow the uh, the game. Exactly one twenty a.m. and zero seconds. Hot Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ, Doc! You disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate when the hell are they? When the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? <laughs> Besides... The stainless steel construction made the flush dispersal. Look out! Uh oh. What happened there? Uh, Doc? Huh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened, to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Doc needs his own notebook. Walk Marty to the left until you see Doc's toolbox. There we go. Notebook. Okay. Notebook. Got it. Emmett Brown. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. 
If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's massive. This isn't time the way it happens. Z, that sounds it familiar. Equals the square root of Z times C squared. And um, Doc, shouldn't we get out of here before the Libyans show up? Hot, what? What? Uh, Doc? Twin Pines, but now it's back to Lone Pines oh, Mall. Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake. Doc! Doc, no! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Okay, so something happened and Doc erased himself Doc. from history. Or was it all a dream? Marty? I've got a weird science okay? poster. Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? I'm gonna have to go back and uh, to meet him over at Doc's? watch the movie. I don't remember if he had a weird science poster on the wall or not, but that's if he did, that's pretty awesome. Alright. So the intro is pretty good so far. I like how they kind of mimicked the intro to the first one. Uh, first movie, but it's uh, they changed the storyline already. I, I like it. Pretty cool. State sale, May 14th, 1986. Dad, are we too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's doc stuff. The city has no right now, to- Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and- Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. So, Doc's been gone almost a year. Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. <laughs> Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just- Remembering. Select items around the lab to make sure Doc didn't leave anything dangerous lying around. Okay. I miss Einstein. Alright. Einstein's bowl. Television. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? All right, let's see what else we got. Jukebox, town square model. Doc built this model at downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah? So? So how about letting me have that model courthouse for old time's sake? Eh, I think I'll keep it. 
Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Uh oh. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me to. Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> Where are we going? All right, scientific equipment. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. <laughs> Doc must have whipped up some crazy compounds in that cauldron. Oh, that smells like beef stew. Hey, Biff. Let's notebook reminds me of Doc. Let's go worthless. It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. And then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. Let's buy it from him. I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh, Not enough. <laughs> I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. That notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. Are you calling me ignorant? I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh, Not enough. All right. Uh, never mind. So I went through all the options with Biff. Doesn't look like he's going to give up the... Uh, electrical equipment. Looks like a hand crank lightning rod. Or maybe a lightning powered pencil sharpener. Lightning powered pencil sharpener. I like it. Hey, Dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Press the X button to open the inventory button. All right, so let's see what we got. So we've got Marty's guitar, photo of George McFly. That looks like about it right now at the moment. Okay. It would take a pretty powerful source force to knock that notebook out of Biff's grasp. Hint one. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. What else we got? Let's make some noise. There you go. Maybe now we'll get the book from from Biff back. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Um, how do I use the Marty's guitar? Now select the amplifier to plug in the guitar. Okay. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. A one, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's Go done. ahead, Biff. Now, Biff, Go ahead and do it. I think that's Marty's guitar. Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. 
get Doc's notebook from Biff. Hmm. I wonder why Doc didn't take any of these with him. I don't know. Einstein's bowl. Talk to George. Hey, Dad. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. Okay. Uh, I need to protect Doc's notebook. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got All an right, obligation go. to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Probably doing these in the wrong well, order, but that's okay. better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. All right. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. So how am I going to get that thing? Well, I guess I haven't tried the jukebox. Over here, all right. Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. Uh, you got it, Mr. McFly. Oh, come on. Enough of that junk. Now, Biff. Sorry, Marty. What the heck is going on here? Hey, Biff. I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh, Not enough. Okay, well... Uh, never mind. Well, we obviously can't buy it from him. I'll probably never know what this is for. I completely understand. I know... All right, no, that's not what I want to do. It would take a pretty powerful, let's get another hint. I'll bet that packs a powerful punch. I already did the speaker. Now that is a dangerous amp. And now something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Biff. I thought I told you not to take my son's guitar. Oh, right. Uh, sure thing, Mr. McFly. Uh, I was just warming him up for you, Marty. Let's see what you got. Well, how do we... What the heck? I don't get it. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. 
Well, I just... This is getting really, really frustrating. Can't leave until I get Doc's notebook back from Biff. Well, that's fine. Hint three. It's nice that Marty's dad wants to defend him, but sometimes you've got to fight your own fights. Okay. Hey, Dad. There we go. About Biff. Dad, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big there we game, go. son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess okay. you can. Hmm. Okay, son, I'll stay out of your way. You know where to find me. Problem? Biff? He's got this... Thing, see, and I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you, no, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. Yeah, he found it first, but oh, well, then I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something, or something. Okay, I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. All right, let's pick up the guitar again. You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. There you go. Crank it to 11, buddy. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. <laughs> wow! Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. <laughs> Alright, that took way too long. Uh, Doc, where are you? Sounded like the DeLorean to me. Well, there it is. It's returned, and it's got Mr. Fusion on it. Doc? Let's see. Uh, the back of the thing said it was driverless, so I bet nobody's in there. It leads to another mystery. All right. Oh, Einstein's back. All right. Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? Handheld tape recorder. Let's look at that. Yeah. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within a lot of time, I programmed the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past. Or oh, was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark, Last Time Departed. Good luck. Okay. Right, right, Last Time Departed, Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Good question. All right. Slow down. Shoe. Okay, Doc. I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. All right. What else we got? 
I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Once I know when to look for Doc. All right. Well. Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. A high speed heel chew in the DeLorean. Something smells fishy here. Well, of course. Okay. That would make sense. Let's see what Einstein has. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Well, I a uh, mysterious shoe. Let's see what we got. What do you know about this shoe, Einie? There you go. Great Scott! I think he's onto something. All right, we're gonna follow Einstein wherever he goes. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? Arcade signage. Come on, slow down. Strickland, the principal. Step away from the door. Ah. Now, let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on. Just as I suspected. Cool again. <laughs> I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboards through the town square every morning between 8 and 8.30 in a decidedly unpunctual manner? Uh, yeah? All skateboarders are hooligans. It's, it's a, a fact. fact. All right. He's Strickland. You aren't related to, uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his, his sister. sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't you? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. <laughs> slacker. State your business, child. You're making me miss Merv. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. All right, uh, wrong button. Come on. Where the heck? I haven't got oh, all come day. on. Ah, you're trying my patience, young man. No, Can that's not what I wanted. Child? Come on. You're making me miss Merv. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. All right. How do I... Words are useless with a stubborn old lady. What else can you offer her to get her to open the door? Okay, I got that. But how do I show her the shoe? Use item. I haven't got all day. What the heck? Ah, you're trying my patience, young man. Can you let me in? Okay. I've got something to show you. We're gonna what get this it? crap figured let out. Me see. 
No, I don't need that. I don't have Marty. This time traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. There we go. I've already got a dictaphone. Go peddle your wares elsewhere. Come on, I already tried the shoe. What now? It's some, um, uh, private. Yeah, well, so am I! <sighs> what now? I already tried the shoe. A shoe? Now, now what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> there we go, okay. I don't know why that took so long to be able to pull the shoe out. <laughs> Leave that creature outside. Sorry, Einstein. All right, so Einstein's staying outside. We're going to go and show Edna the shoe. Don't know what's going on here. All right. Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Mm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Nine out of ten Look people are hooligans. It's a fact. All right. Uh, Have a seat, Sonny. Hey, you kid! <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. That's weird. Don't touch those. My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Get jam all over them, okay. What are these? My editorial trophies. Cat, trophy. Cat lovers quarterly. It's legitimate journalism. Fair enough. Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. All right. She's going to get the tea. Obviously, we need to look around a little bit more. Cat bowls. Cat trophies. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Man, these are powerful. I could see Biff going into the video store. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out-of-control hedonist. Just like his father. If there's a clue to find a doc out there, I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. 
All right, newspapers. Let's talk to the old lady. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Every town should have a little old lady like that. Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Yeah. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But, oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh, yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes, the day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. All right, so we're probably gonna have to go to the Citizen library and find out when Hill Valley since the day it was founded. The uh, speakeasy. What's with all the newspapers? What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue. From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. Okay. Don't let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! <laughs> Alright. Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. I have probably already done this. Hey, there's Jennifer's mom coming out of the market. Mrs. Parker? I find it curious that she always uses the same strapping red-headed bag boy. Don't you? I wish I knew which one used to be a speakeasy. Wish I knew which one. I told you not to touch those! Well, why can't we look? Come on, slow down. Oh my god. Excuse me, Miss Strickland. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch. No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny. Yeah, yeah, a generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square, right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. Okay. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. Following year, as I recall. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. <laughs> I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy <laughs> burned down. Absolutely. Don't let me keep you from your business. All right. I told you not to touch those. Miss Strickland? Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on lower things. Is that? Tim, Tim! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! 
Alrighty then. Don't let me keep you from your business. All right. Let's see. And then lost your shoe during the age of prohibition. Uh, when an illegal drinking established part of the ground. When uh, what went up in this place? I already found that out. All right, maybe we just need to leave. Would you mind if I stepped out for a minute? I, I just remembered a video I've got to return. Do you have to go? I get so few visitors these days. But and I'd hate to have to tell my brother, your vice principal in charge of discipline, how rude you were to me. <laughs> Especially with graduation coming up <laughs> and all. Well, what's he supposed to do? You know what? You know what? Let's. Uh, Miss Strickland, about your tea. Uh, you forgot to turn on you! the. You! It spelled with a U. You illiterate vandal! All right, let's just leave. I guess I'm stuck here for a while. Okay, I get it. fine. I told you not to touch those. All right, let's go talk to her again. Come, ah, come on, Miss Strickland. What could those newspapers help me? Yeah. Don't let me I keep you from your business. Strickland lost that shoe the day the speakeasy okay. burned down. But when was that? I told you not to touch those. She's gonna yell at us every time. Miss Strickland? I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally, the day after. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned out. Yeah, of down. course. Don't let me keep you from your business. I've already done this. Valley video. Oh, there we go. Okay. Rebuilt February. Rebuilt in February 32. Okay. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. <laughs> Miss Strickland? I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter. All right, back come on. Let's just... Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the come day on. after the speakeasy burned down. Don't let me keep you from your business. She didn't let us play with the newspapers yet. I told you not Son to touch those. Son of a gun. Those. Candy looks older than I am. Marshall Strickland. My grandfather, gunned down by Mad Dog Tannen over a hundred years ago. That's not how I remember it. Not leaving until I find Doc somewhere in those newspapers. Well, she ain't gonna let me pictures. Miss Strickland, don't let me Come keep you from your on. business. 
rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Come on. Or let's see, what do we got for clues? You know the year the illegal gin joint burned down, but you still need a date. The search would be easier if Edna weren't in the room. Okay. Kitchen door. That tea's never gonna boil. That tea's never gonna boil. Um... I wouldn't do that if I were you. Ms. Pretty Whiskers is very particular about who handles her food. Okay. Miss Strickland? So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. Don't let me keep you from your business. All right, so... Cat bowls. Mess with the radiator, I guess, again. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now. There we go. All right. She's out of the room. Now let's go look at the newspapers. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy, singer vanishes, Hill Valley Expo delights crowd, soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley police station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order. Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Ow! Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! <laughs> All right, let's stop right there. We've uh, found out what date Doc was at, so um, hopefully we'll see where this goes. We um, will head back in time to 1931, I think it is, um, but this is where we're going to leave it. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you'd like to keep getting videos, hit the subscribe button, and as always, I'll catch you next time.